Welcome to this webinar on making ebooks. The program we're going to be using is Create a Story. You don't have to create a story, but that's what it's called. You can find that either in Purple Mash or in the Early Years area in Mini Mash. So if I click on Early Years there, click on Mini Mash. Got some reading and writing. Go to reading and writing here. There's create a story. OK, so it's it's in the early years area. As Sim. Well. You'll also find it uh, under English. You can see it's here. And you'll also find it in the tools area. Here as well. So I'm just going to launch it. Now, there's three different options or levels, if you like, of uh, functionality within Create a Story. So you've got My Simple Story, you've got My Story and you've got My Adventure Story. So I'm just going to take you through the possibilities uh, for each one and how you might use them. Don't forget, though, there is a more detailed uh, guide up at the top here in this little video guide button, which you'll find on all the apps. Uh, within Purple Mash. So I'm just going to click my simple story here and this is very very straightforward. Um, you have got some pens to create your own um, picture or drawing in this area. Uh, you can do some basic animation. So I'll just show you how you might use it. So let's say in early years we were looking at um, my family. So they might want to draw a picture of their family. They might want to draw themselves. They can do some basic animation if they want to. If they click on there, they can sort of swivel themselves. They can they can move themselves. OK, so you've got some basic animation here. Uh, if you click the little preview button up there, you can see what it's going to, what's going to happen. And if you click the play button, it goes into play mode. You can simply add new pages by just clicking the forward button there. And you're on to a new page. So again, you could now talk about a particular member of the family. You can delete the page. And of course, you can also talk about what's happening. You don't have to type in here. So if they're too young really to type, they could tell you about your, uh, their family by just clicking the record button there. They don't want any of those. They can just click record. And off they go. And you can see it's recording up and down like that. And then when I finish, just click done. And that will add the recording to that page. So OK, so that is very simply how you can use the um, most basic version of uh, create a story. So you can draw, you can do some simple animation, you can record uh, verbally straight into the um, into the page. You can type if you want, you can add extra pages and you can do some very simple animation at the top there. So what we'll do now is we'll move on to the sort of middle option and we'll explore some of the features there and how you might use that. So now we're looking at my story, which is the middle option here. And instantly you can see on this page, we've got a few more options. So again, we've got the pens down the side like we had before, but we've also got this little sort of tool button there, which when we click onto it, we've got extra um, things that we can use here. So we've got fill tools, we've got uh, block tools, we've got some extra sort of paint options, uh, etc. So you, you've got extra sort of drawing and uh, picture capabilities. What you've also got is the ability to add a background here as well. So if you look up at the top here, there's a little sort of background button there. And if we click on that, uh, we can we can draw a background or we can go and get a background. If you've got a camera attached to your 
uh, machine, you can click the camera button. But let's just click on the art button here. So you can see there's a whole load of backgrounds that we've already uh, provided. So um, again, we can click on any of these and it will add that background. You can zoom in and out. You can add extra things to the background. But then when you click OK, in it goes like that. And then once the background's in, you could then draw on the top of it as well. So if you if you wanted to if you wanted to add a duck to the background, then you could quite simply add a duck like that. And if you wanted to animate the duck, we just click on the little animation button and you can see we can make the duck swim across the water as well if we wanted to. OK, and just like we did before, you can just add a new page by clicking um, the forward button down here or here. Or you can copy pages as well down here now. But we're on page two. So again, I'm going to go back to the background button here and I'm going to click on. the art. Now, as I said, we've got these backgrounds that are already made. But you might want to have your own background. So you might have gone on a on a school visit somewhere and you want to add some photos and they talk about what they've been doing on their school visit. So in this case, we could just click choose a file and then you could go and get one from your computer if you wanted to. So you could just go from my PC there and I could go and find some pictures. I've got some demo pictures here. Uh, so here's the Bluebell Wood near my house. So I'm going to click on that. It's just a photo that I've taken on my phone. And you can see it's dropped it in there. Now I can zoom in on it as well if I want to like that. And I could adjust it so it's exactly how I want it. And then, OK, I can have it for just this page or I could apply it to all the pages. But I just want it for this page. OK, and you can see there's my blue bellwood in there. As before, I can put text in the bottom here, but I can also record just as I did previously. OK, so if I click on the record button there, I've got sample files that I can use, but I can also upload my own recording. So if I've done some music uh, creation in the music software, I could upload it from there. So I could compose some music. I can also compose with a little piano as well here now. If I wanted to. So you can see I've got a lot more options um, that I can use uh, with the uh, with the sound as well in this one. And as I said before, you can then just move to the next one and you can draw like you did previously. Now, what you can, you'll also spot here, there's an extra little button that shows you um, a sort of outline of the pages that you've been making. So if I click on this, you can see that's my first page, that's my second page, that's my third page. So I can actually see how it's progressing. And if I want to go to a particular page, I can just click on it and I go straight into that page. So this is a sort of like a page plan here. If I look, if I've looked at one of these pages, for instance, in here and I decide I don't want this page, then I can just bin that page and take that one out. And then I can just add another one like that if I wanted to. And I can say, do I want it before or after? And I've got another page ready to go. I've got the preview button as I had before. So different ways you might use this. Um, if I open another file here that I've made earlier you might want to retell a story so this is a story that has i've actually taken from uh, serial mash so i've just included all the different pictures from the story now i've added the text underneath here but you could just as easily take photos of your big book or um, use pictures uh, from a serial mash book and ask the children to retell the story so they could retell it for instance Underneath here, they could write it in or they could click the record button and retell the story verbally if you wanted them to. So you could just put all the pictures here as a teacher. You could add them all. 
that's as far as I got. And then you can just click on here. You could save that. And then once you've saved it, you could then set that as a to do. So you just go share, set that as a to do. And then you could say, this is what I'd like to do. Here's the pictures from the story. Can you retell it? OK, so that's that's one way uh, you might want to do it. Likewise, you might want to drop the photos in and the children talk about the visit that they've been on or what they've observed in a science experiment. So different ways that you could use this um, if you didn't want them just to tell their own story. So in a nutshell, that is the middle option, if I go back here, back into create a story. So that was this one, my story. The Uber version would be my adventure story. But again, you choose what features you actually want them to use in that. So if I click on my adventure story, you can see um, I'm into that version but there's a few extra little options up here uh, there's uh, the ability to add sprites and there's the ability to add buttons so those are the two uh, sort of extra features really and those allow you to jump around um, and create non-chronological texts so let me show you one that i've done before let's have a look at uh, well let's look at little red right little red hen okay so here's a story okay so I've got my little red hen there and here who will help me plant the corn now what I've done here is I've added sprites okay from the clip art so if I click up here can you see this button click on that one you can click on the little image button there and I could choose something to go in here. So um, I might want uh, another animal and I might want this seagull. OK, so when I'm adding it, can you see here I've got choices? I can animate this seagull so they could rock from side to side as they're coming into land. OK, um, I can um, add a sound to it. So uh, you could just, uh, if you didn't have a suitable one, you could uh, put a sound in here. Whatever the seagull says will go in this point. Um, and you can also click on it and get it to link to different pages as well. And I'll show you that in another example uh, in a moment. So here you can see there's my seagull and if I click the play button there's my seagull now what I've also done is I've added sound files to these sprites so not I said the pig not I said the duck okay you might be thinking well how did he do that well all I've done here is I've added a sprite and if I click on it this little pencil button and what I've done is I've added a sound there when you click on it. So it says something. So again, you can make an interactive um, book there. It could be even say French, for instance, you could have objects on the screen. And when they click on them, it tells you what they are in French, for instance. So that's adding sprites and getting them to do things either to move or to speak. But another example I've got here is my solar system. So here what I've done is I've added a picture of the solar system and I've added buttons on here for the different planets. So if I uh, click up here, can you see the button button? I can add a button. So I could uh, say Saturn. I could say it's a yellow button that I want. And 
uh, I could say when I click on it, I want it something to happen so I could go to a certain page. So if I click go to a page, I've already created one called Saturn. So I'm going to click on that and click OK and OK. So now I can adjust the size of that. When I click on the Saturn button well, in play mode, I go to the page on Saturn. You can see I've already labelled it Saturn down at the bottom there. If I click on Earth, can you see? It goes to my Planet Earth page with the information that I've added from Planet Earth. And what I've also done here is I've popped another arrow on there called Home. And so when I click on Home, I go back to this page. So it's a bit like an interactive index I've created there. So if I click stop, you'll notice when I click on Earth and edit it, you can see the text is Earth, but the action is go to page Earth. OK. Likewise, if I went to the Earth page. There's my Earth page. If I click on this and edit it, you can see that the action is go to page this one, which is the home page. So that button will link me back to this page. Now, you can see that visually as well with the little planner. Now, we looked at that in the uh, previous version of to create a story. But here, of course, we've got links from one page to other pages and then also back to the home page. So it actually shows you what's happening in your in your book that you're able to link backwards and forwards to each page. And again, if I clicked on the page, that takes me to Saturn. If I wanted to add a picture of Saturn, I could go to the background button there. And what I can do is import my own pictures of Saturn. But if I click, um, if I click there, and I haven't got a picture, I could see if there's any in the media manager. So if I click media manager, so that'll have a look in uh, purple mash. So if I pop Saturn in there, oh, there is one. There you go. So I can use, I can use that, and I could zoom in on Saturn if I wanted to, and then click OK. OK, and that's added Saturn into there. And if I wanted to go back to the home page, I could click on this button, click on a button like that, maybe, and just put home page, go to page, that one. OK, OK. And can you see it's now got a home page button there. So if I click play now, I can click on Saturn. I'll go to Saturn. I can click on home page. I go back to the home page. That's an example of how you might use it, for instance, in science or in any book. It could be a topic on the Romans. It could be a topic on volcanoes. And you can click on certain points and go backwards and forwards. Now, there's one more I'd like to show you. If I click on here and open another one, there's Zoo here. OK, so I've done one here on the Zoo. And you can see there's a picture at the beginning and then there's all the different pages here. So this could, again, easily be our class visit. Okay. But what you can do using those um, interactive uh, buttons, um, if I wanted to link, for instance, from the giraffe, um, what I could do is I could click on um, the button here. I could have a sort of empty uh, sort of space here and I don't necessarily need to put any text in here so when I click um, I could just put maybe just giraffe and can you see 
it's added giraffe in here, but there's no background on it, so it's sort of invisible. And then if I edit it there, I could say go to page three with the giraffes on. So I've labelled it, but I don't have to label it because if I did another one here, I could just click on that, click OK. Can you see it's added an empty one there? So I could drag that over the lion there. And then with the pencil button, I could say go to page with the lions. OK. OK. So if I played this now. At the zoo. I can click on the giraffe there. And it would go. To the I saw giraffes eating. What did you see? at the zoo but you can see there's no link at all uh visible but if i click on the lion i saw a lion sleeping Shh. you can see i can go straight to that page so you could make some quite nice interactive resources if you wanted to by effectively burying hyperlinks into a page and that could link to different bits of information as well. So this is like almost like a interactive index, uh, but a visual one. So what I've done really here is I've just given you a quick overview of the different options here within Create a Story. So you can create very simple ones, you can create ones with backgrounds and animations and sounds, which are great for sort of retelling uh, and creating your own from, say, visits that you've been on. But if you want to go and create interactive texts, which are a bit more like web pages and link from either a hotspot or a button to different pages and back again, then my adventure story version is probably the one for you. But the main thing I need to point out is you doesn't have to be a story. It can be any type of ebook. It just happens this piece of software to be called Create a Story. OK, I hope you found that uh, useful and I hope he gave you a few ideas. Don't forget there is a how to button there, which will go through a lot of the key features um, within Create a Story and do look out for other webinars that are coming up um, that you might be interested in in the future. Thanks very much for watching.